Hi everyone, this is part six of the basic stress analysis with ANSYS series. So in the last part, we um, had this model um, of a plate with a hole and we used half symmetry. Um, this time we're going to extend the symmetry further and use a quarter sym symmetry model. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, let's just look at a little tip for display. Uh, some, people have, some people have been asking about this. Um, suppose we want to reverse the video in this display. How would we do this? Let's go to plot controls, style, uh, colors, and reverse video. Um, just for the fun of it, let's let's do this one in reverse video. Okay, so um, the first thing we need to do is clear our mesh so that we can um, chop this model in half. Uh, so we just go to meshing and mesh tool and in our mesh tool we're just going to hit clear and it's asking us which areas we want to clear so let's pick all. Okay, so now we've um, cleared all our finite elements. Let's just plot the area again so we still have our area. And now we want to divide this area in two. So we'll use exactly the same um, procedure that we used the last time. Um, we'll turn on the work plane. Um, we're going to um, offset uh, the work plane um, to key points. Okay, in this case, we're going to move it to the key point that is here, um, where the two um, arcs that make up the circle meet. And go OK. So you can see now our work plane is is positioned here at this key point. So if you don't know what I'm talking about here, I went through this in the previous tutorial, so using the work plane in quite some detail. So I'm going to move quite quickly through through it in this tutorial. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to orientate the work plane so that the XY plane of the work plane is, is moving along this line here, because that's, that's where it will cut. It will cut along the XY plane. So again, up to the utility menu, work plane, offset work plane by increments and just get rid of the mesh tool there. Here is my offset work plane menu. Uh, I make sure that this is set to 90 degrees here and I want to go plus X. Okay, so rotate around the X axis. So now my Y axis is pointing up out of the screen. My X axis is pointing horizontally across. So when I divide this area by work plane, it'll divide along this line here. Okay, so let's find that command modeling. So the divide is a boolean command, so I'm going to operate uh, boolean uh, divide and I want area by work plane. Okay, so the menu that comes up asks me um, which area do I want to divide. We only have one, let's pick that and go OK. And you can see a line has appeared here. So now what I can do is delete one of these areas. Um, so I'm going to go into modeling and uh, delete. Uh, area and below. So again, remember if I say area and below, it will delete the lines and key points underneath the area. If I pick area only, it will delete the area but still leave the key points and lines there. So in this case, I wanted to delete everything, so I picked area and below. I go OK, and now this is what I'm left with. So one quarter of our original model. The work plane is still showing up down there, and we don't need that anymore. Let's get rid of that. So again, same as the last time, work plane, um, offset work plane to global origin. Okay, and you'll see the work plane has disappeared. And if we just zoom out now, just to look at where it's gone, it's gone down here. Um, it still hasn't aligned itself with the global origin. So let's just uh, align with uh, global Cartesian. Now the work plane is aligned with the global Cartesian. Let's turn it off because we don't need it anymore. And now let's just go back in and look at um, the area that we have. So now we've got one quarter of the plate. Okay, let's go and mesh this. So using our mesh tool, uh, let's first of all um, mesh with the mesh we had before. We set, okay, so this is just the um, default mesh. So this is a very bad mesh, very poor. Why is it very poor? Um, we've got very large elements. We've got no um, refinement of the mesh around the area of high stress. So we're going to expect the area of high stress to be around here. Um, um, we know this from the previous two analyses. So, you know, we, we should really have um, a fine mesh in here because the um, field quantity that we're looking for, which in this case is, is, is stress, is varying very rapidly in this area here. So clearly this mesh doesn't capture that. Um, so let's just clear that mesh. Okay, and a, a lot of the, in, the information I'm going to be talking about in the next few minutes about meshing is, is covered in, in some detail in, in the book Practical Stress Analysis with Finite Elements. And 
I really recommend that you get this book, particularly if you're if you're having trouble understanding some of the concepts I'm talking about. So this book will explain to you what a good mesh is, what a bad mesh is, and, and, and how to obtain a good mesh. And I'm going to apply some of those principles in the next few minutes to, uh, in this tutorial and in the next tutorial. Bring the area back up again. So what could we do? So we could, first of all, just set a um, a, a, an area size. So uh, we're going to set the area size here, okay, and ask for an element edge length. So let's put in one millimeter. Um, now, when I mesh, I should get a regular mesh. So that's a very regular mesh. Um, all the elements have an edge length of one millimeter. This will probably give me quite a good result, um, but it's not refined. Everything is the same size. So let's see how we can maybe um, get a bit of a better mesh this time. So let's open up Mesh Tool again. Let's clear the mesh that's there. Um, put my areas again. So if the mesh tool disappears, you just click on this raise hidden menu here. Um, so this time I'm going to set the lines. So I'm going to clear the area um, uh, edge length that I've set before by pressing clear, pick the area. And this time I'm going to use set lines. So I click set. And I, let's pick these two lines here. Um, and I'm going to say I want let's say 50 divisions on those lines and I'm going to say I want a spacing ratio of about 8. And what that means is that the elements at one end of the line will be 8 times smaller than they are at the other end of the line. So let's go OK to that and you can see that um, it's divided up the lines into elements here. So let's just plot the lines so it's easier to see that. So you can see that they're actually both going, well this one's going the right way, I've got large elements going down into small elements there here I've got large elements at the wrong place uh, so luckily on the mesh tool there's a flip command so here I click flip and I click on that line and I go OK so now um, I have uh, very fine elements here and uh, more of a coarse mesh out here um, let's just try and mesh that I, I know that that's not really going to work out but let's just have a look and see what happens Okay, so now it's 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 done what we said uh, along the edges, but in the middle here is terrible. It's 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 obviously it's only used three elements around the circle, which it hasn't even captured the geometry of the circle. So that that mesh is unacceptable. Let's clear that. Um, and let's continue to work on the lines. So you can see um, uh, our our line um, divisions have disappeared this time, but we we know that we've got very fine um, elements here and here and very coarse elements out here so we really need to refine around this circle as well so again let's go line set and let's put about 20 divisions let's say on that circle and let's not use a spacing ratio so they'll all be equally divided and again let's just mesh that and see what happens okay um, and again now this area is quite good in here but you know th these elements out here are terrible they're very badly shaped and there's also a large difference in element size this element here is huge compared to the, the tiny element here in the corner and again that's bad practice to have such a, such a variation in element size throughout a model it's also very bad practice to have these these um, elements with very high aspect ratio so that means their length in relation to their width is very high so high aspect ratio elements are bad we're looking to get elements that are more or less square shaped if possible OK, so let's clear that mesh. Um, so uh, let's just plot the area again. Uh, one of the problems that we have here is that um, we are using a free mesh. So we can't use a mapped mesh because we have to have a four-sided, a three or four-sided um, 2D uh, shape in order to use map mesh. So if I click on map here and click mesh, you'll see that I should get an error telling me area two is irregular, cannot be map mesh with quadrilaterals. There is a way around that, um, which is to actually um, join up um, these two lines up here um, into one line um, um, and to actually make it a four-sided um, uh, shape. Um, before we do that, let's just see if we can make this a bit better. So let's maybe set these, these two lines. Let's give these two lines um, some kind of a reasonable value. So again, let's maybe set those both at 40 and give them a... a, a equal spacing ratio so don't set anything in spacing ratio let's go OK and let's just mesh that and see what happens sorry I never turned up the mapped option so go back to free again mesh 
click on that and go OK. So now we've got, you know, a quite an OK mesh. OK, so we've got fine elements in here, coarser elements out here. Uh, in here in the middle, it's not so great. Um, so let's see what we can do about that. Let's see if we can actually uh, uh, join those two lines together and actually make um, a mapped mesh from this.